It can't have escaped anyone's notice that there has been a marked increase in the theft of metal objects from all around the country. And that's because criminals are cashing in on the current spike in the value of metal worldwide. Now, with pickings this rich, it seems nothing is safe. I've been examining the full extent of this crime and the impact it's having on rural communities. Glenall Estate in Boris and Ossery, County Leash, is one of 1,600 ghost estates dotted around the country. The unsold homes here have been looted with abandon. These houses have been stripped of anything and everything of value. And for thieves in the know right now, that means metal. So copper cylinders, pipes, fittings, even radiators, all ripped out and taken in what the locals here refer to simply as a free-for-all. But it's not just unsecured houses like this one that are being hit. Public art, church artefacts, manhole and fire hydrant covers, beer kegs, road signage, farm equipment, even the lead from the roof of these bandstands, all stolen to feed the unprecedented market for metal. In fact, so rampant is this crime. A total of 2,652 metal thefts were recorded last year that the Gardaí have set up a metal theft forum to liaise with those affected and devise an action plan. But any action will come too late for Hunterstown GAA Club in County Louth, which was hit by metal thieves in recent weeks. This is the area where a lot of the damage was done. Uh, they came in and they stripped the copper off the, the shower areas here. Uh, they, unfortunately, what they done is they, they broke the copper right at the floor area, right on the tiles, which means we have to then break out the tiles to replace or to repair the copper pipes. Less than 200 euro worth of copper was stolen. It will cost the club over 11,000 euro to put it right. Oh, we were devastated, completely devastated. Like for a small club like us to raise money like this is just, it's a year's work. If something like this to happen, it just completely, it means that any little extra things you do for the kids or do for, you know, for the teams, it's just you can't do it this year. Farms are also seen as easy marks by these criminals. A 30-foot bale trailer like this one was stolen from Ken Keating's yard last summer. Worth up to €5,000, it was later found in the A1 metal scrapyard in Mount Melick. However, when the owner went to pick it up, the trailer was badly damaged. My trailer was stolen at 2 o'clock in the day and within an hour of leaving here, it was converted into €690 Euros cash. The young man who stole the trailer was convicted and sentenced to 10 months' detention. It emerged that he had sold two stolen trailers to A1 Metals yeah. in the same week. It has to be policed properly. My trailer wouldn't have been stolen if there wasn't a market for it. The chap that stole it, he had no use for a trailer. A1 Metals, which is owned by one of the biggest players in the industry, 151, declined to take part in this programme. In a statement it said... A1 Metals works within the existing legal framework and has successfully cooperated with authorities in the apprehension of criminals involved in metal theft. We are limited in what we can do under the current legislation and are strongly in favour of a new, strengthened legislative system and have consulted with the Forum on this. The Irish Creamery Milk Suppliers Association says the theft of metal farm equipment and machinery is now a major issue for its members. We were inundated with calls from our members and they were all reporting instances of, of ploughs being taken and gates being taken and, and, and trailers, steel trailers. There is evidence to suggest there that metal theft has gone up by 30 to 40 percent. There's massive demand out there for, for metal. It has got a value. It's worth stealing. Industry experts say there is also an environmental issue with many of the cars that come off the road now being broken up illegally for metal scrap. The scrapping of cars has been strictly regulated since 2007. All cars being scrapped must now be taken to authorised treatment facilities where they must be carefully depolluted. Only authorised facilities can issue Certificates of Destruction or CODs. Approximately 120,000 cars come off the road every year, on average. Last, in 2011, I think it was 50,000 CODs were issued. That included the scrappage scheme. The problem is, where's the other 60,000, 70,000? You know, there's no, no real way of knowing where they ended up or how they were dealt with. And the problem is, one car can contaminate or make 30 million litres of water undrinkable. That's how serious it is. The scale of the illegal activity is staggering. Cork County Council has a hard-won reputation for strict enforcement of the regulation on metal waste. 
Using helicopter surveillance to locate illegal facilities, the council identified a total of 187 illegal sites operating in the county over the past six years. Almost all have been regularised or cleared altogether, like this site in My Lane Cross near Ballancolic. However, industry sources complain that not every local authority is as diligent as Cork. It's against a, a huge background of, of illegal operators operating outside the, the rules and regulations and making an awful lot more profit than, than, than any of the all choice people can do. Unless the legislation is, is enforced and reg rigorously enforced, it's a major problem and it's going to stay a major problem. And increasingly, this is a problem that is affecting us all with thieves ripping out copper anywhere they can find it. That includes the cabling along rail lines, our telephone lines, and even live electrical power. People or vandals who are carrying out this crime, this theft, are playing an extremely dangerous game because they are entering live electrical stations and electrical equipment with voltages ranging up to 400,000 volts. We've had incidents of fatalities. We've had very serious injuries. The cost of this vandalism it runs to several million euros per year to ESB. Those feeling the brunt of this crime are pressing for radical changes. The one thing I would, I would change in the morning is I'd take the cash out of it and I think that would go to 95% of solving the problem. Removing cash transactions and introducing a cashless payment system is only one of the three elements which we are advocating. And one on its own is not going to change this. We need all three to be introduced, which is the cashless payment system the proof of ownership and the proof of identity of the seller. The Department of the Environment has drafted proposals along just these lines. Under the draft regulations, anyone selling metal would have to provide proof of identity, including a PPS number, as well as proof of current address. Cash transactions for metal would be banned, as would the sale of metals which have been burned. The Metal Recycling Association of Ireland declined to take part in this programme. However, Primetime has seen the association's official response to the draft regulations. The association told the minister that if the draft regulations are implemented, the number of illegal and unlicensed operators will increase as the industry is driven further underground. It also says that banning cash transactions is not the solution and warned that any legislation which targets the scrap metal trade in isolation from other cash trades would probably be subject to a court challenge in the future. In the long list of metal material that has been looted and stolen in recent years, perhaps the most shocking case was the theft of this memorial in Castletown in County Leash. Standing over 10 feet tall, the bronze oak sculpture was inscribed with the names of 21 local children and young people who had died tragically. Among them were Siobhan, Michael and Michelle Grehan, who were pulled from their blazing home on Christmas Eve in 1991. Michelle died that night in Port Leash, in the General Hospital in Port Leash, and Siobhan died two weeks after and Michael unfortunately for three months. And so they didn't make everybody done what they could. To choose the site where it was very carefully. So it's people that couldn't go to a, a graveyard to grieve, you know, which was the be end and end of all. But this place was sacred to those people, you know, including myself. You could go down there any time of the day or night, whenever you felt the urge. So it's a, it's a huge loss. It's like losing the kids all over again. I mean, there's no limit to what these people can do. They just don't care. They don't have no respect. None whatsoever. The social impact of these crimes is keenly felt all over rural Ireland. I had to spend six close to 6,000 euros to put up a big automatic security gate. And uh, all the houses, uh, most of the houses in the area now have electric gates. It's changing the whole li country life where if the gates open, you might drive in and have a chat with somebody, but uh, when the gates are all shut everywhere, you just drive on past. I don't think it requires Sherlock Holmes to solve these crimes. But, you know, an overall common sense approach backed up with legislation, we should be able to get to the bottom of this in order to protect rural life and the society that we live in.